So we are going to learn how to solve second order linear differential equations using variation of parameters. To do that, we'll look at this equation here, y double prime plus q of t y prime plus r of t y equals f of t. Now this equation doesn't have a coefficient in front of the y double prime, and that's because if there is a coefficient here, we can just divide the whole equation by that function just to get rid of it from the start. So when we think about solving the second order differential equation, when we use variation of parameters, we're going to assume that we already know a homogeneous solution to this differential equation, meaning we've solved this equation for when it equals zero instead of when it equals f of t, which is often easier than solving the original equation. Once we do that, what we're going to do is say the particular solution for y is equal to some function u1 times y1. And in this case, y1 is going to be one of the homogeneous solutions to this equation, or one of the complementary solutions. And u1 is the function that we're trying to solve for, because once we solve for u1, then we can just multiply by our homogeneous solution and get our answer out. Now the reason we like having this product is because when we differentiate it, yp prime gives us u1 y1 prime. And then over here, we add u1 prime y1. But what's cool about this is because of the product rule, one of the terms that we get is u1 y1 and then u1 y1 prime. And when we differentiate this again for yp double prime, we're going to have a u1 y1 double prime as well. And when we look at this column right here, y1, y1 prime, y1 double prime, going with each of those derivatives, when we plug this part into our equation, it's going to equal zero because y1 is one of the homogeneous solutions. So when we plug it in, it equals zero by definition. That means that this makes it really convenient for us to deal with our equation. The issue here is that we've differentiated and then got this u1 prime, and then when we differentiate again, we're going to get u1 double prime, which is a little bit annoying. We'd rather not have that. And in order to do that, we're going to play a little trick that might seem kind of strange at first, but we'll see why it's important in a second. We know because this is a second order differential equation that there are two homogeneous solutions that are linearly independent. So what we can do is take our u1 y1 and add u2 y2. So u2 is a new function that we don't know and y2 is our second homogeneous solution. The reason this is cool is now that we have two functions, we only have one equation to restrict two separate functions, which means that we actually have the ability to add a second restriction that might make our job easier. So in this case, when we differentiate u2, y2, it's gonna be the same process as what we had here. So we'll have a u2, y2 prime here, and then over here, a u2 prime y2. But what's important is, remember we said we don't like this u1 prime, u2 prime stuff. So what we're going to do is just set this part equal to zero. So we're going to add an additional constraint here and say we're going to set u1 prime y1 plus u2 prime y2 equal to zero. And again, this is why having two of those solutions is so important, is it lets us add this extra restriction to get rid of that u1 prime, u2 prime. And that's really nice because then we can cancel this out and just have the stuff that we want, the stuff that cancels out so much cleaner. When we differentiate this again, once again, we'll have our u2, y2 double prime. And then when we differentiate here, by the product rule, we are going to end up with u1 prime y1 prime, and then a u2 prime y2 prime. But because it's just the first derivative, not so big of a deal. Now we can plug all of this stuff into the equation that we have right here. So let's start out with our yp double prime. That's going to give us u1 y1 double prime plus u2 y2 double prime, and then plus u1 prime y1 prime plus u2 prime y2 prime. So after this, we'll have plus q of t, and then our yp prime is going to be this part. So u1 y1 prime plus u2 y2 prime, and that's it. And then we add r of t times u1 y1 
plus u2 y2. And this whole thing is going to equal our f of t right up here. Now when we take a look at these columns on the left side, when we plug in y1 double prime, y1 prime, and y1 into our 1 q of t r of t coefficients over here, that's going to give us 0 because y1 is a homogeneous solution and we're multiplying all of these y1s by the same multiple u1. So this whole column is going to cancel out. And for the exact same reason, the column of y2, another homogeneous solution, is also going to cancel out. So all we have left is u1 prime y1 prime plus u2 prime y2 prime equals f of t. So I'm going to write our second constraint down next to the first one that we set here. So this is the system of two equations that we want to use when we're solving for our answers through variation of parameters. Now what we're actually going to do here is solve for u1 and u2. To do that, let's start out by solving for our u1. So we'll go back to our equation here and isolate u1 prime. So we can start out by subtracting u2 prime, y2 prime on both sides. So we get f of t minus u2 prime, y2 prime, and then we'll divide this through by y1 prime. So we get u1 prime equals f of t over y1 prime minus u2 prime, y2 prime over y1 prime. Now, this is our u1 prime. What we can do is plug it into our second constraint equation here and solve for the answer to u2. So let's do that. Our equation here, our u1 prime, is going to turn into this. So let's write this all out. And that whole thing is multiplied by y1. So let's put that out here. And then we're going to add u2 prime y2. And this is equal to 0. So our goal is to isolate u2 prime. To start out, I'm going to multiply everything in this equation through by y1 prime. So that means that on this right side here, the 0 is going to stay, but we're going to multiply y1 prime right here, set that equal to 0, and then these y1 primes in the bottom are going to cancel out. So these denominators are just going to be a 1. Now we're going to move everything with u2 prime in it over to the right side of the equation. So on the left side, we're just going to be left with f of t times y1. So on the right side of the equation, when we move this negative over to the right-hand side, it'll be a positive. And then we're going to have a u2 prime times this y1 stays, y1 times y2 prime. And then this positive moved to the right side will be a minus u2 prime. And then we have a y2, y1 prime. So now notice we have u2 prime in everything. We can factor that out. And our last step is just going to be to divide out this term that we have here. So now when we solve for u2 prime, we will get u2 prime equals y1 f of t divided by whatever we have on the right side here. So y1 y2 prime minus y2 y1 prime. And notice if this is u2 prime, all we have to do to solve for u2 is take the integral of that with respect to t. So that is the solution for u2. And then we can just go back and multiply it by y2 to get the first component of our solution. For the second component, we can do the exact same thing, but just switch 1 for 2, because everything in here is symmetrical. So if we do that, we'll get u1 equals the integral, notice on the top here we have y1 for u2. So for u1, we'll have y2, f of t. And then on the bottom, I'm going to do something a little different. If we switch the 1s and 2s on the bottom here, we'll have y2, y1 prime minus y1, y2 prime. That's just negative of what we have on the denominator here. So for u1, I'm going to put a negative on the outside of the integral and then put the same denominator. So y1, y2 prime, minus y2, y1 prime. And the reason for that is that notice on the bottom here, y1, y2 prime, minus y2, y1 prime. 
if you know your linear algebra well, you might recognize this as a type of determinant. It's one specific type of determinant that we've actually talked about before. You can check the description. That is called the Wronskian determinant of y1 and y2. So if we take the determinant of the matrix y1, y1 prime, y2, y2 prime, that is going to give us what we have on the bottom here. And that's the reason that I made both of these denominators equal, is we can actually write each of these as w of y1 and y2. So that is the entire variation of parameters method. It says that once we have two homogeneous solutions to our second order equation, we can set our particular solution equal to the sum of some function times that homogeneous solution for each of the two solutions. Because we have two of those, it allows us to set an additional constraint here that makes the derivatives a lot easier for us. We can go through that equation, cancel out all that nice stuff, and then solve for our answers just like this.